All right, so for this project, um, we are going to go into more complex shapes <clears throat> to be able to draw something a little bit more. Now, there are ways that we can kind of go around this where we can layer um, shapes on top of each other, take away the fill to be able to build stuff. But the other way, um, and let me open up this, this, the other way that we can do it is we can just look at the object itself and some of the stuff we can make complex shapes. So I am going to walk through some of these shapes and you guys are going to end up having the challenge of finishing the rest of this. And you guys are going to be doing the colors. So when I'm looking, I'm seeing um, the black here. I see a gray. I see these. This is kind of a different type of gray. So we got at least four or five colors on here, um, but we're going to be creating this. In order for us to do this, the easiest way is for us to be able to load the image, okay? So if we could display the image here, then we could uh, more easily be able to, comp uh, to create the drawing, okay? So to start off, we have to have th whatever image we're going to be using. Now we can place images, we can load images. Um, the easiest thing is that when we find an image, um, and the images have to be in PNG, JPEG, or JPEG. They should not be anything else. You're going to end up having problems. If you zip the file and don't extract it, you're going to end up having problems. Okay, so this is the uh, image that I want to load um, for me to do it. All I got to do is I got to open up this carrot right here, and then I'm going to click the drop down arrow, and I'm going to click upload file. It's going to bring this um, upload file. Uh, option here and all I need to do is either click to check the browser or drag and drop the file. So I'm going to just drag and drop this. Okay. Now as soon as I see it here, it's done. Okay. So now it's done. Now if I want to see the name, I'm going to increase the size so I can see the full name. Now I got a couple things on here. I have 600 by 600 to let us know that we're going to change the canvas size to 600 by 600. Okay, but now I want to actually rechange this name because this is going to be a lot to write. So I'm going to click the drop down area and click rename. I'm leaving the file extension. Okay, we need to know what type of file. So .png, .jp, .jpg, .jpeg, um, all of those we need to keep. So we're just going to make this. Um, let's just call it truck. Truck.png. When I'm done, I click enter. And now it's saved, OK? Um, in order for us to take this image, we now have to tell the sketch. So we've put it in our files, our possible files to use. But we now need to tell the sketch to load it, OK? So um, we are going to need to hold a variable. So let's just call it um, truck image. That is my global variable. This is what's going to hold it. So let's go into the references and let's look up image stuff. Okay, actually, right there, image. This is a good topic. Okay, loading and displaying. There's load image, there's image. So we can click on these to see. So let's do the load image. And this is our function that we would have, load image. This is how it is used, okay? You have to have a variable that's going to hold it. We have to have a preload function, which we haven't used yet. Um, and then this is the piece of code. We're loading the image, we're typing the name of the file, and we're storing it or assigning it to that variable, okay? Loads an image from a path and creates an image from it. The image may not be immediately available for rendering. Um, that is why we need to use a preload. So let's read the preload. Okay, the preload, it's called directly before the setup. The preload function is used to load all the files in a blocking way. What does this mean? It means that all the files that you use in a preload, they will all load and it will finish loading everything in the preload before it calls the setup. So the order, the flow of the program, if you put a preload in there, is that preload will happen until it's done. Then setup runs once, and then draw runs continuously, okay? So um, 
if we write that function preload, now I have to make sure that I'm spelling it correctly. So that's where using my reference is very, very useful. There's no capitalization in there, okay? Just for notes, um, we'll run first until it is done. We'll run only once. We'll run continuously defaulting to 60 times a second. Okay, so um, each of these gives us something different. We see the preload function all the time. A lot of times when you guys are playing video games, whenever you're on like a menu loading screen or um, a splash screen, that's uh, your game actually trying to load some of the components that it needs before it can run the rest of the game. And those have to be done because you can't try to display an image when the image hasn't been loaded um, because it'll crash the system. So using this preload is very, very useful. Okay, so um, using this as my reference, I need to load the image written like this, give it the exact file name, and then assign it. Um, <clears throat> using the preload, you need to be using the stuff like load image, load JSON, load font, load strings. All of these should be in a preload, okay? Um, there are other ways that you could do this, but this is the best way. This is the way that we're going to default for computer programming one. Okay, so um, let's jump in here. The truck image, and I have to write it exactly the same. Um, I'm assigning, so this is the assignment operator. I'm giving it a value. I want to load the image into that truck image variable. Um, I have to give the path to it, which the path is over here. The path, if I don't have any folders created, so create folder, I could create a folder to use for organization. Right now I have pretty simple projects. I don't need to create folders, but later on you're going to have to give the exact path because you'll have exact folders. Okay, so for this, all I need to do is just give this exact name. Uh, it's case sensitive. I have to spell it correctly. I have to write everything exactly the same. Truck.png, okay? I cannot write anything any other way or it won't find it. Okay, now, after I do that, I'm gonna click Run. Okay, if, let's say, I did something like I did, uh, how about capital T, and I ran, I should get an error in the console, and it's going to say something like there was a problem loading the image. And then if I highlight this, it's saying truck.png. You need to check that that is correct, okay? That would be a spelling mistake. So that is what the error in the console is saying. Uh, you'll also end up having an error uh, if, let's say, that you what you attached, you changed the file name, or um, it was actually a zipped or encrypted file that you just tried changing the name and loading it. It will not be able to read it and so error out. Okay, so now this is working. I've loaded that image. I want to draw this image, um, so I want to display it. So now I'm going to go back to the reference and look. Okay, we see the image. We have loaded the image. Um, I want to see us actually displaying the image. So this right here is us displaying the image. Okay, um, now for this, let's just go into the image, image method. <clears throat> there are a couple ways that we can do this. We could do it where it's just going to use its original um, width and height. There's uh, other ways where we can give it uh, its specific X and Y values of where we want it to be, and then it's, we are giving it the width and height that we want to do, which could skew it if that's not the default size. Okay, so let's just see. I'm inside my draw, inside the code block. Okay, I want to load and I got to call that variable. Let's say I want to load it at zero, zero. This is my default size. Okay, now if I didn't change my size because my image is at 400 by 400, or is it at 600 by 600? See how it's going off the page? If I wanted to give additional values to this, I could say I want it to be 400 by 400. 
to have it resize. I could say I wanted it to be 400 by 600 and have it skew some, okay? Um, so there's just some ways that we can kind of deal with this. I don't really need to change this if it's on my page. This is actually where I want it. There's uh, more to how I could draw images if I wanted to adjust the source image that I'm pulling um, to the destination image. Um, this becomes useful when you're doing animations. Okay. So here is my image. This is what I want to draw over. I'm going to use this to my advantage, moving this around as I do shapes so that I can make sure that everything looks good. Okay. So um, we're going to do a couple things in here. Uh, so let's make a list. Um, we need to create some uh, complex shapes. We need to uh, use the rectangle function with rounded corners. And we need to organize this using functions. Okay, we're going to build it using functions because this will help keep us organized. So we're going to use comments. We're going to use um, comments and functions. Okay, so first thing that I want to do when I'm doing this is I want to look at what shapes. Okay, um, we're going to work on part of this. Okay, um, doing this background shape, and then you guys are going to end up having to do the door, and then you're going to have to do the window. All right. And then um, I'm going to walk through the rectangle here and then the rectangle on top of it, okay? Um, playing around with fill, no fill, and adjusting the stroke. Okay, so let's first create a function and let's call this um, truck. Let's do draw truck bed. Or, yeah, let's do that. Okay, so there is my draw truck bed. I'm basically wanting to call this after this image so that I can see the image and I'm going to draw on top of it. Now, this would make it really, really useful if I, inside my draw, am using some helper code. So I'm going to write some helper code. Um, to make things easier. We went over this before. I'm just going to quickly write it. Um, I actually want to display it on the screen here. I think that's going to make it easier. Why don't I just make a function for it? Function um, helper co uh, coordinates. Um, we're going to display text. Let's see. I want it to fill as black. Text. Um, we'll use the back tick. Mouse sex. Mouse Y. There we go. There's our coordinate pairs. Where do we want it? We want it at, let's say, 50, comma 50. And then we're going to call this helper coordinates. We call the function by writing the exact same name, giving any requirements. So there it is. I want a bigger size. Um, text size. Let's do 16. That's better. There we go. There's my coordinates. All right. So first thing that I have um, is we need to draw that truck, truck bed. I see this shape right here. Okay. I see that right there. That looks like a rectangle. That's what I'm going to draw. So let's make that. So I'm going to make a rectangle. I'm not sure about the size yet. Now I could use this to help me out. Let's see. It looks like I'm at 42.97. And this is at 394. So I'm like at like 350. Um, that's what I'm going to start as my width. Okay. So let's do mouse X, mouse Y, and I'm going to do 350. I'm checking the width to make sure that that looks okay. I'm going to check my height. 
my height is not the same. This is not a square rectangle. Okay, so we need to look at the references for rectangle. And there's multiple things that we can do. Okay, we even have the rounded um, width and height. I need both of these because they're different sizes. So I can just, you know, use my mouse. I'm at 73 and I'm going down to, oops, I'm at 97 and going down to 368. So I'm at like 250. I'm making guesstimations. Okay, I want to see if I can cover up. I need a little bit more. Um, on the height, so let's try 270. That looks pretty good. Okay, now I need to adjust my color fill. Um, let's make it gray. Okay, so fill colors. Again, remember we can use color picker. Um, but while we're doing this, this is RGB values. I need to pick something that's on the far left. Now, the farther left that I am when I'm looking, the less color that is there, okay? Um, the closer that these values are to the exact same value, the more that it's going to be gray. So let's just show this out, 177, 177. That is perfectly gray, okay? Now, if I'm on the far edge and I'm clicking down farther, I get a darker gray the closer to black I am, okay? When I'm towards the top, that's closer to 255, that's the closer to uh, white. So this is what I want right here. Now, there is a shortcut when we do our colors, and you guys can look it up, but if I have the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel all the exact same value, then I only need to have one of them, okay? That's why our black and our white only needs one because uh, it doesn't have a variation. So now I wanna put this over it and we have that piece, okay? So this is, um, I'm looking at the coordinates that I have on my screen. So I'm looking at 4298. I'm gonna replace this, 42 comma 98. Make sure I'm finishing with semicolons. Okay, so there's my square. Now I have that shape inside, but I can't see it anymore. So I'm gonna go and move this to um, below my draw truck bed. And now I'm just gonna work on this rectangle right here. Okay, so this is my back of bed. Uh, bed design. All right, so we want another rectangle. This is gonna be our point, and we're looking at you know, somewhere around 52 to 385, approximately 320. All I'm doing is I'm using my mouse position to estimate. Um, 320, and we're probably gonna be uh, less than this. So I'm looking at the width right now. So my width is still mm, maybe a little bit more. 330. That's actually pretty close. Okay. Now we're going to be the same thing. So let's do 250. We'll try to get that looks actually pretty good. Okay, so I want this on top um, and I wanna kinda of center it, but I wanna round everything. So now I can move this image back down to the bottom. We're gonna want to put this here, find where it looks kinda of centered. That's 50, 107, so that's what I'm changing here. 50, comma, 107. Okay. Now, if I, because they're both the same color, um, I can leave that, um, but if I needed it to be see-through, I could say something like no fill, um, and then it wouldn't fill in the inside. Um, I could also say no stroke, 
and it wouldn't give a line for it. So I don't see the line anymore. Um, I can also give a color for it by saying the stroke, and then maybe I might want to give a color of, let's say, white. So there is that outline of white. Um, again, everything though, uh, once I start setting a stroke color, then everything is going to have to have a stroke color. Okay, so this is one way that we can kind of deal with it. Um, is once we establish it, we got to use it everywhere. Okay, so on here, we see that it looks like it's almost a black. So I'm going to keep that with a black. And let's just comment out the picture really quick to make sure. Let's go with black. It might be actually a little bit of a gray. So if I wanted to do kind of like a really dark gray, let's say I do like 20, that would work. Okay. Now what I need to do is I need to round this edge. So to round this edge, Okay, that's what this top left, top right, bottom right, bottom left. Okay, that starts from the top left and we go counterclockwise. If we give it a value, that will deal with the rounding. Now, um, one thing to keep in mind, you can never um, round it more than half of the value of the width or height. It won't do anything if you do. Um, there's a, a point where you get diminishing returns. So here, I want to round, so let's say I just do 10. Now if I put just one value, it's going to do all of them. If I put two values, so let's say 20, it's going to do, one's going to be width, one's going to be height, so um, see there's my top left, and then these ones look like they have a much sharper rounding. Let's do 50, oops. This is just the top left, and then this is everything else. So now if I wanted, I have two. This is the top left, top right, and then these are everything else. Okay, so I can individually put each one. Um, the easiest way that I find is that once you start doing it, just be explicit on each of them. Um, looking at the picture, though, I think 10 is probably fine. So let's just do 10, and there we go. Um, now we can bring our image back down to the bottom, display it. That looks not too bad. I could play maybe around with this a little bit less. Okay, so that's how we would do that one. Um, we're going to just keep going and we just move our image so that we can always see what we're working on. So now I'm going to start doing this shape and I want to do this on top of the image so that I can make sure that I'm drawing those points and then um, I can move the image down. So we want to do the uh, truck front function draw uh, truck front. Okay, so I want to call this after I draw the image so that I can see the image below Okay, now the next thing for doing complex shapes, let's go back into references. We'll do a couple of these real quick. Okay, so we have shapes. We have played around with some of the primitive ones. Now, um, when we wanna do more than one point, um, it's a lot easier if I start using uh, vertex points instead of trying to build it out. Triangle is pretty difficult, I need three points, but trying to use the mouse X and mouse Y, this just makes it a lot easier. So we want to build this using vertex, um, which is just a point. Um, so all of these, I can still draw squares, diamonds, stars, anything. I'm just giving it a point for every point on the screen. And it has to be in between begin shape and end shape. This is where stroke and no stroke and fill and no fill will be useful because we can use it as outlines and stuff like that. Okay, so let's start out. Draw trunk, draw, draw trunk front. Um, so it makes it easy. Let's make it white so we can see exactly what we're doing because it's gonna draw on top of it. We're basically just trying to cover it up. Okay, um, we're gonna start with the very back. 
I'm going to do begin, shape, end, shape. Okay. Now, I want to do multi-cursor select on here. I'm going to count my points. I got one, two, three, four, five points. So, one, two, three, four, five. We're going to write out our code. So, click while holding control or command. Um, and now I have my multi-cursor. I can write for text, parentheses, and finish it with a semicolon, so we're good. Okay, now the first point that I'm going to do, I'm just going to start going pretty quick. I'm looking for this point. I'm using my mouse, 419, 225, 419, 225. Go to my next one, 512, 224, 512, 224. Go to my next one, 584, 316. 584, 316. Go to my next one. 585, 406, 585, 406, down here, doing this one, this one is 419, 406, 419, 406, there we go, that's the back of the truck, now I can, um, when I look here at the different shapes for the end shape, let's see if we can actually click on that in the reference, Okay, we have different options. So if we see here, if we put close, our last point is going to connect with our first point. Okay, this will close the shape. It's optional. So that's why I don't see a line there. But if I put close, I now have a line there. Okay, so this looks not too bad. Um, I would need to apply my color. So since I am already starting to use different fill, um, let's go ahead and create a variable real quick for it. And let's call it let uh, truck gray. We'll give it a value. We can't do it in the preload. In fact, I could just minimize this by clicking on the arrows. It's still there, but now I don't see it anymore. It's not in my way. Let's say gray, uh, excuse me, truck gray is equal to color, and then they need to give it the value, 171. So now, any time that I want to display, so here, draw trunk front. Now that I'm done, I can do truck gray. There we go and we want it here too. That way, if we realize later on that we want a little bit of a darker color, we can change that and it'll change everything. So even these hubcaps, I should also have those um, on there. Okay, so we've done these two shapes. Let's look at this one right here. Um, this one and this one, if I took off the uh, stroke on it, it would make it a little bit easier. So I have my draw truck bed. Um, now I want to draw the image on top of that so I can move this. So I'm going to just drag this down below. Now I don't see that anymore. So when I go to draw the rest of the truck bed, which you guys are going to do, you're going to end up doing the door. You're going to do the window. Um, you're going to end up doing this little reflection piece. That's all that truck front. Um, here's the bottom of the truck bed, and then we have the axle and the wheels, or you guys could call it the bottom. So you're going to end up having multiple functions to help organize. So we're going to do part of this one. I'm going to do this shape right here, just so we can see that we can actually take two shapes and we can build stuff on top of it to um, make it look like a whole new shape. Um, now this looks like this is black. so. Um, let's put a color, or I was going to say um, truck bed. Um, if we're, we need to make sure that we, it's obvious what color we're doing. Okay, so truck bed color, I'm going to give this a value. Truck 
bed color is equal to color. And this is really, really close to some type of black. So let's do that. We're going to go not complete black. OK. Now this and this, this looks like it's drawn right underneath this rectangle. So I could look at draw truck front. I have that draw truck bed. Um, this is back of bed, bed of design, or bed design. We want to do um, bottom. Now, because this is might be drawn, you know, before this was drawn, I need to think of the order. The order matters. So if I want it to be in the back of the picture, it needs to get drawn first. So let's put bottom of bed. Okay, and we have two shapes. So let's do, we're going to do a rectangle and we're going to start from here and then we're going to go all the way to here. Now, if I wanted to try to figure out what that length and stuff was, watch this. So let's fill with the color, truck bed color, truck bed color. Uh, actually, let's make it white so we can see that we're covering up first and then we'll change it. Okay, so we know we want to do a rectangle. I'm going to look for the position first. I'm going to do this one right here, 20, 371, 20, 371, but I'm not sure how wide I should make it. Well, let's use mouse X. This will be helpful, okay? Mouse X, see how it's sizing when I drag the mouse over, okay? Now, um, if I drag this all the way over, this is saying 391 on here for my helper code, but I know that I need to subtract uh, where my X starting point was. So if I go all the way over, I'm seeing 393. Okay, 393 minus 20, that's 373. Okay, and now I need to figure out this height right here. Again, I have to subtract this y, so I can go down here. That's 408, but that's going to be minusing this. Okay, now if I wanted to do that with mouse y, it's the same thing. I can drag this down. And I'm looking for that height, but again, I still need to subtract. Okay, so how thick is this really? You can play around with it. We're looking at 37. 37. Okay, we want that to be on uh, to see the truck below it. So I'm going to move this truck image. Again, we're just going to keep moving it around so that we can see what we're drawing on top of it. Okay, I want that doesn't look too bad. We want, you know, Either we're going to overlay here or we're going to overlay here. Now, if we're going to do multiple shapes, because we're going to have a shape here and a shape here, um, let's go ahead and draw that other one. Draw a truck bed, bottom of bed. And we're going to need another one that's going to be starting from here and it's going to go down like this. So, rect, let's do mouse X, mouse Y. I don't know what that is yet. Let's just look. We're looking at 396, 229. 396, 229. And then 396. And we're coming up to this right here. That's 419. I could do 419 minus 396. That would still give me the right thickness. Okay. Or we can actually just do that math. So we're looking at around 25. Okay, and then how long do we need to do? Well, we can stretch it, mouse Y, because remember that starts at zero. So as I'm stretching it down, I can kind of find out where we're at. So it looks pretty good. That's 178. Let's replace 178. That does not look too bad. 
Now, uh, let's just overlap that. Okay. I want those to blend together. In this case, this is where I want the stroke to be off here, but then I do want a stroke here, okay? So if I'm going to do that, if I'm going to take the stroke away, I'm going to have to add it back. So no stroke will blend these two shapes together, okay? Um, and I see a little bit of lippage here, so I could just move one of them up. So let's maybe move it to 370. That looks good. Okay. Um, but then I lost the uh, stroke here. So if I want this to have a stroke of black, stroke of, and I could say that it's called that color. I can choose that color. We're at the truck bed color. Truck bed color. Okay, now it's added back on there, but I don't have a stroke for this one. Okay, so the last thing I need to do is I need to round this edge. So I'm looking here, this is mine right here. First one is top left. So um, let's just try 10 and then we're gonna do zero, zero, zero. So top left, top right, bottom right, bottom left. That looks like it's a, maybe a little bit too much. Let's do five. That looks better. Okay, now, I can change this from white to truck bed color. There's my color. Now we can play around with our other stuff. So we have our truck front, we have that truck bed color, we have this. Um, the rest of the pieces, you guys are gonna end up having to build. And when you're finished, you should be able to completely comment out the image and the helper coordinates and it will look exactly the same, okay? Or as close as possible to it. So you guys are going to use variables for any difference in colors. Looking back at what we have, let's look at the image again real quick. Okay, we have this color, which does not look like it's the same as this color, but it looks like it could be the same as this color. So there's one color. This is a much lighter color. Um, Looks like this color right here is the same as these two. Same with this one. And then this looks like it's a pretty dark gray. So we got some, we got the truck bed color. You got um, that dark gray, which would be like that design color. And then maybe, you know, our doors, um, they might be black or they might be that truck bed color. So work on this stuff. Our tires is also going to be on it. So that is the challenge. We've walked through how we can use, um, the begin shape, end shape to add the vertex points. We're going to repeat that again by doing this point, 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 point. Do that again here, point, 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 point. If you wanted to make sure that you had that roundedness right here, then you might want to do this as a rectangle. And then this as a separate um, thing, because it could be sharp. And then you could round these edges. This piece right here, that is a complex shape. We have a point, 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 point to draw that, um, and that would go on top. So if you're going to combine shapes, you're going to need to remove the stroke, okay? Um, for most of them, you don't really need to remove the fill, okay? That's it. Good luck. Have fun.